Today, let's look at the emergence of bamboo timber in the 21st century. This presentation covers four aspects of contents: project references with bamboo timber, how bamboo timber is made, why should bamboo timber is encouraged to substitute traditional timber, how to use timber in design and constructions. Let's first look at some prominent cases in the world where bamboo timber has been applied. You'd be surprised. Madrid Barajas Airport in Spain has the world's biggest bamboo interior ceiling, a whopping 230,000 square meters of naturally bendy yet sturdy bamboo sprigs, with highest fireproof standard for public space in Spain. The initial project was completed in 2005, with extensions carried out in 2007. It has been awarded the third place of Best Engineering Project 2005 by Spanish Engineering Institute, and Sterling Prize 2006, awarded by Royal Institute of British Architects. It is also the recipient of International Architecture Award 2007 and the Best International Terminal 2013 by World Airport Awards. Uji Grand Theater in China is the first theater structure in the world that does bamboo in both interior finish and exterior facade to completely replace traditional wooden finishes. The acoustic walls in the performance hall are tailor-made with highly condensed fused bamboo to capture and reflect high frequency and lower register sound, to cultivate the best surround sound system in the world. These acoustic walls are made of tens of thousands of geometrical pieces manufactured entirely in Dassault workshop, combining. Cutting-edge CNC work and craftsmanship. Shandong Grand Theater is another masterpiece designed by the late great Paul Antou. The architecture comprises of three separate buildings: opera hall, orchestra hall, and stage hall. All three buildings' interior walls, panelings, and seating soffits. Are done by Dassault Elements organic bamboo veneer. Judging by the looks, some might think these wall panels are made of solid bamboo board. Although in reality, it's bamboo veneer craftily applied to aluminum sheet metal before molded into a bevel shape of panel. These veneered aluminum sheets are then. Formed into various shape and designs to finish entire audience interface. Vanka headquarters stands 15 meters tall, with all indoor fixtures and furniture made from bamboo, and 130 square meters lush tropical landscape with bamboo outdoor fixtures and decking as well. Both wall panels and seating boards here are CNC cut into a sound absorption mesh hole structure with soundproofing fabric glued in the back. It's all manufactured in-house at Dassault Workshop. So are these elaborate bamboo screens made of Dassault element panels, laser cut into these fine patterns. These bamboo seatings are made of Dassault elements as well. In Dassault Furniture Factory, Drangi, which is co-owned between Dassault Group and IKEA of Sweden, these outdoor deckings are made of Dassault SeaTac. Hilton Row, USA, is a residential apartment complex located in downtown Charleston, in United States. All decking and shiplap sidings in the rooftop garden are made of Dassault XDR, tailor-made Class A fire rating. One of 
these common driving forces in all these architects from very different backgrounds use bamboo to substitute traditional hardwood in their projects is environmental consciousness. Some scientists say, at the current deforestation rate in the Amazons, West Africa, and Southeast Asia, planet Earth's tropical rainforest rainforest could only last less than 100 years. And up to 28,000 animal species will extinct in the next 25 years due to deforestation. Concrete is a major pollution source in the built environment, as we all know, a main contributing factor to global warming and climate change is the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So any building material we use should always be minimizing its life cycle carbon footprint. Plastics is a certified silent killer of maritime lives. Every year, more than six million tons of garbage are dumped into the ocean. None of it is biodegradable. By 2050, there will be 12 billion metric tons of plastic in landfills. WPC outdoor timber products fall right into this category. By far, you may ask, how does bamboo fit into the picture and solve any of these above-mentioned problems? Bamboo is grass; it's not wood, even though it grows as tall and sturdy as trees. Farming bamboo actually helps bamboo forests to grow, just as mowing your lawn. It requires zero human. Effort of replanting to sustain bamboo forest, unlike farming wood, requires human intervention always. Hence, carbon footprint. Also, a bamboo sprig can mature to six meters tall within five to seven years, comparing to more than fifty years lead time to replenish commercial hardwood. Fused bamboo or any bamboo products in the market are biodegradables, unlike popular WPC product equivalents in the market that contains above 50% of plastic. Bamboo growth deposits huge amount of carbon dioxide through photosynthesis, just like wood, except for bamboo doubles wood's metabolism rate. Meaning, unit mass of natural bamboo material stores almost twice carbon hydrates consolidated from atmosphere than wood. One acre of Moso bamboo forest could store up to 250 tons of carbon, which is equivalent to emission caused by 50 people's carbon footprint for living in the United States for a whole year. Or equivalent to 160 people living in China for a whole year. Why does skinny bamboo pack this much environmental benefits? First of all, it's the fastest growing plant in the world. Some may grow 91 centimeters or 36 inches in a day, and matures to six meters tall from a sprout in four years. Bamboo leaves. Have a stronger photosynthesis effect, which releases 35% more oxygen into the atmosphere during growth and solidifies up to 250 tons of carbon dioxide per acre. Even better, bamboo's root system is self-sustainable by auto-regeneration, unlike farming commercial hardwood. Where you have to replant and replenish by substantial human effort, which will be eventually tallied into the product's life cycle carbon footprint. Visually, there are two distinctions of bamboo forest: the kind that looks more like trees with individual stems above ground is monopodial. On the other hand, those stems clustered together are called sympodial. Around the world, bamboo resources are bountiful, with China has the biggest natural reserve and commercial development as well. As we mentioned earlier, bamboo belongs to grass family, 
It means not only its root system resembles a grass lawn, its budding and stemming system is also totally different from trees as well. If you're a botany buff, you'd probably know the molecular difference between dicots and monocots already. It's okay if you don't though. Just know that bamboo is monocotyledon, yet wooden species are dicotyledon. If we compare a tree stump to a bamboo cone, the entire thickness of the bamboo cone composed of living cells that is called parenchyma. Although there's only a thin layer of cambium in a tree. That is active cells that's growing and susceptible to corrosion. Bamboo's environmental benefits mostly come from being a monocot, while the downsides coming with it is that its growing cells are much more susceptible to insects and microbials due to its re- rich nutrients and moisture content. This requires special industrial processes to alter bamboo's natural molecular structure. In order for making it into timber products, unlike trees, natural bamboo fibers have several distinctive qualities that makes it perfect as building material: sturdy yet light, durable, stable, stainable, and biodegradable. Here's a tensile strength illustration. You can tell easily that bamboo can sustain way higher stress than traditional timber, such as fir, birch, poplar, beech, spruce, pine, or cedar. Overall, it costs way less energy, hence carbon emission generated, to produce any timber product than other building materials, such as steel, aluminum, iron, glass, plastic, copper, and etc. So how is bamboo made into commercial timber products? Farming bamboo in China has been mostly done in the traditional way by local farmers with a machete. Fresh bamboo comb is very easy to cut through, so no chainsaws are required. The harvested combs then transported into designated factories and broken into strips by specially designed radius blades. The strips then have to go through a sanding machine to get rid of both membranes on the inside and outside of the comb. Then the sanded bamboo strips can be laminated together like layers of plywood, either horizontally or vertically. Here comes the first generation bamboo panels and lumber. For flooring products, it's very similar, except for the final steps of groove and tongue process. Natural bamboo timber comes in light yellowish woody greens. To improve its antifungal and anti-molding capabilities, a common practice of carbonization could be applied by pressurized steaming. This will re- result in a much darker hue in the finished product. The second-generation bamboo is made from further breaking down natural bamboo strips into crushed and dehydrated fiber strands, and then glue them back together in a massive density. To ensure the high density, humongous pressure needs to be applied. It's usually done by giant machine arms, and the finished result is amazingly more like real wood rather than bamboo. All strand woven products are carbonized. The third generation bamboo product mainly pertains to flooring. It keeps the integrity of the bamboo comb, slice it open on one side, and then open it up perpendicularly into a plank. To achieve that. The combs need to be soaked in a prepping liquid until softened and pliable. These bamboo rind flooring, if you may, are ultra durable thanks to the entirety of bamboo's original molecular structure. It's offered in original color as well as sanded and stained color varieties. The fourth generation bamboo is a direct upgrade of second generation. By extremely carbonizing the bamboo fibers in high-pressure chamber, so that corruptible nutrients are depleted from its cells, its antifungal and anti-molding capabilities are significantly enhanced as a result, and truly comparable to the finest tropical hardwood. And we call this fourth generation the XTR. Currently. 
Dussel Group offers standard XDR decking, XDR cladding, soffit, and XDR lumber panels. The fifth generation is yet another upgrade from the second generation by infusing the crushed strands of bamboo fibers with a nano ceramic formula. The ceramic content can shield the vulnerable nutrients from insects and microbial attacks. So it becomes an equally competent outdoor weatherproof material, except for the color is not as dark as XTR, yet it's a rich cognac color.